What is an AFR? Today we're going to go over what air fuel ratios are, which AFR stands for, and how it's important with running an EFI system. We're going to go over some of the do's and don'ts with air fuel ratios and how it's set up in the EFI system. So if you want to go in and tweak on them, you definitely can. And these are some of the things that you'll go through to make sure that you got it set up optimally for your vehicle. First, let's go to the AFR section on the handhelds. Whether you got an LS system, one of the ultra ram systems, or a throttle body EFI system behind us, they're all gonna be under the tuning section and it's gonna be the first thing in there called AFR targets. You're gonna notice that the AFR targets have a bunch of set points that they're in. You're gonna see that they're based on RPM and KPA, meaning kilopascals, which is what the map sensor is reading. You can think of it as vacuum or lack thereof. With the system, it uses vacuum to know the load of the motor. So zero inches of vacuum or 100 KPA would be full load. If you're doing boosts, you'll start going into PSI, but that's a bearing of load. And then it's also broken down by RPM. So you're gonna have a bunch of RPM set points. With EFI, you can choose where you want the air fuel ratio to be in all of these sections. So in an idle or in a light cruise condition where let's assume you're driving 45 miles an hour down a highway or a street, you can set up the system to run nice and lean somewhere around 14.4, 14 and a half. And this will make the engine run as efficiently as it possibly can and help with fuel economy. But if you were to put your foot on the floor, vacuum disappears, your KPA reading will go to 100, and we can target a different air fuel ratio, something like 12 and a half to one, which will be best for maximum power. So that's kind of a quick rundown of how this system works and how you can set it up. Now, the question also comes down to, what is the safe areas that I should put this in? Now, the big thing with that is if there's not a load on the engine, you generally can go to a leaner air fuel ratio. So if you're just cruising or you're, at high, or you're at highway speeds, those are situations where you can lean out. But if the engine's under load, you wanna stay rich so it helps cool the cylinders on the engine as well. If you run that lean air fuel ratio, for example, 14 and a half to one under wide open throttle, you're gonna get really hot cylinder temperatures and that's when you start damaging and melting components in the engine. And you definitely don't wanna do that. All the EFI system setups also have a range that you can set up your air fuel ratios. So that kind of keeps you in a good buffer zone. But you could always refer to charts online as well to kind of find where a good air fuel ratio for your vehicle is. The way I look at it, wide open throttle, you really don't want to go anywhere leaner than 13 to 1. 12 and a half is safe. A lot of people kind of hover in the 12.7, but under a cruising condition, 14.4 to 14.7 seems to be the area where most engines like. That doesn't mean that yours is going to like it, doesn't mean it's not going to like it, but this is how you go in through the system and check it out and see how the engine likes the AFR that you're running. Now, jumping onto our handheld, we're going to go into Go EFI Tuning and our very first option is AFR targets. In AFR targets, we got a population of a bunch of values that are already put in. This will be good enough to get you started in driving down the road on pretty much any application. But if we wanna go in somewhere like our idle AFR target, we can lean out our air fuel ratio. We can also rich in it up. Now, every engine's gonna like something a little bit different but if we want to see what the window is that is allowed for the adjustment, we can jump in and we can see on the minimum and maximum under the edit field. Now, that will keep you in some sort of a safe range, but it isn't necessarily optimal for every application. So on the engine that we have right here, we're going to try and show you at least at an idle the air fuel ratio and how the engine sounds when we target something like a 12.8 to one air fuel ratio, and then we'll lean it out up to 15 to one. So you can hear the difference in the engine. And an engine 
is going to like something specific. Some like to run a little bit richer, some like to run a little bit leaner. What we're ultimately looking for is a clean, stable idle, not something that's hunting around up and down. Uh, if it's loaded up, you could also hear a loaded up engine as well. So let's go through. We're going to fire it up. It's going to be at 13.6 to 1, which is our default. And then from there, once the engine comes to an idle, we'll lean it out, listen to the engine, richen it up, and listen to the engine again. So we have a pretty clean, stable idle with 13.6 to 1. So let's raise this all the way up to 15, and we'll listen to the engine. You'll probably hear it start to labor. We could even go a little bit leaner if we want to. And at an idle, there's no such thing as too lean. We'll just find out that the engine won't stay running. Right here, you can kind of hear the engine laboring, trying to run smoother, but then it kind of stalls out and then picks back up. So let's go the other direction now and we'll target something really rich. There's no reason in the world that we would want to target 12 and a half to one. But again, when we target something this rich, we're starting to get a little bit of smoke out of the exhaust and the engine is kind of laboring to run on the fuel. So now if we jump ourselves back to 13.6, which is kind of a clean spot, the RPMs come up a little bit and our idle is smoothed out. So that's a good representation of what certain air fuel ratios like. Another thing that we could look at too is if we jump into the dashboard, we have our IAC step learning. If we target a really rich air fuel ratio or a lean one, what we'll notice is that our idle air steps will adjust pretty severely to try to get the engine to continue to run. So let's go back here, we'll drop this down, 12.3, back into the dashboard, and here's our IAC steps. It was hovering around 20 before, and because we're targeting such a richer air fuel ratio, the system had to add another 20 steps, 25 steps of air just to get the engine to run. If we go back the other direction, we'll lean her back out to about 15 and a half to one. RPMs pick up pretty severely right away, but then starts to stumble. But if we look at our IAC steps again, they've worked their way back down. And now that the fan is turned off, the IAC steps have dropped even further. So that's another representation of what the air fuel ratio will do and what it will affect. Now, going back into our tuning section for AFR targets, oh, we don't want to work offline. We have our adjustments on a different parameter sets at different RPMs and KPAs, which is basically the map reading. Uh, the 45 KPA is more of your cruising, where the engine's not under a lot of load. In those situations, we can lean out the engine more. So in here, we're at 14.4. Uh, you could try to go up a little bit more to like 14.6, 14.7 and see if the engine likes it. That's a way to try to promote better fuel economy. Uh, if you lower the value, you're gonna help cool the engine a little bit, but that comes at a cost of fuel economy. So you don't really wanna go too low on that. You could also make the engine a little bit sluggish. Uh, in here, under the wide open throttle, WOT, 95 kpa this is basically like said wide open throttle and we want to target something much richer so we have these set at 12.6 12.5 you may pick up a little bit of power um, 
if you have like a chassis dyno or something, you could see it if you go up to, let's say, 12.7, 12.8. Um, but this is generally a good number to keep nice and safe without uh, risking any uh, really high cylinder temperatures to cause any kind of type of uh, engine damage. But again, in these windows, we have adjustment where we can do a minimum and a maximum. So wide open throttle, we have a range of 11 and a half to one all the way up to 13 and a half to one. I wouldn't generally recommend being as lean as 13 and a half to one. Uh, also wouldn't recommend being as low as 11 and a half to one, but you can play it out and see what the engine likes. But in most applications, you could just leave the value right where it is and mainly just kind of tweak on your cruising and your driving because that's really where you're gonna see most of your fuel economy gains. So a big thing to remember here is the system itself has a default setup for all the air fuel ratios. So if you just wanna start up and run the engine the way that it is, I highly encourage starting out that way. Don't make all your changes right away. I see a lot of times when we get systems back here that have uh, been run, someone's having issues with it, they send it in, and we see something like all the air fuel ratios are set to 14.7, or all of them are set to 12.5. So a lot of people may get confused as what the perfect air fuel ratio is. They hear the word stoichiometric, the 14.7, or they hear maximum power at being the 12.5, 12.7, and they stick to it but that's not convenient with fuel injection. It's not optimal to be running a super rich air fuel ratio under a cruising condition where you're just wasting fuel for no reason. And on the vice versa side, under wide open throttle, you don't wanna be running the engine that lean because then you're gonna run into stuff like burning a valve, melting a piston, and so on. So work with the values that were set in the system initially and you may find in your cruising so the 3000 rpm 45 kpa area you're going to want to play with that value it's set at 14.4 to begin with creep it up to 14.7 see if you get a fuel mileage improvement see if the engine starts to surge when you're going down the highway when you're leaning it out that's kind of a way to tell if you're going a little too lean there but overall you want to stay kind of within a half a point of where everything is, plus or minus. Um, and when it comes to the big thing, if you're starting to do E85 or other types of fuel, we got to remember that these EFI systems, the oxygen sensor itself reads in a value called lambda. Lambda does not care about what the air fuel ratio percentage is with the fuel. What it's reading is is it rich or lean and all the fuels are on the exact same scale in the computer itself it then does a calculation to convert it to afr on gasoline what that means is if you're running e85 for example you're not going to be targeting e85 the ethanol stoichiometric which is like 9.7 to 1 you're going to be following the same air fuel ratio as gasoline now there's certain values you can play with too. Ethanol is really forgiving with running rich. So a lot of times you may target something slightly richer, just knowing that it's kind of forgiving and you can optimize your power easy, more easily that way. But when it comes to that air fuel ratio, feel free to play with it. Be a little more cautious under wide open throttle. Under idle, play with it just to see what the engine does. It's kind of fun to listen to what the engine likes. I hope that answers everything that the air fuel ratio targets do in the EFI system. If you have any questions regarding the air fuel ratio or how you should set up your engine, please comment them down below and check out our tech videos for additional tech tips and tuning adjustments.